The iPad Mini 7 is Apple's most frustrating product of the year, but I love it, and let me tell you why. So why do I love the iPad Mini 7 so much? It's because it's the one iPad that you can take almost anywhere with you without even noticing it. It's the one iPad that I can comfortably sit on the sofa at the end of the night or in bed relaxing before I go to sleep. And it isn't a beast or a mammoth thing to hold. And that's why this year's iPad Mini 7 refresh is so incredibly, incredibly frustrating. At a time when Apple have given us one of the most crazy refreshes of one of their products in such a long time with the M4 Mac Mini, I'll leave that link down below. For them to just neglect the iPad Mini 7 and do what feels like such a minor, minor upgrade is mind-blowing. When we dive deep into it, there isn't a great deal of difference between last year's iPad Mini 6 and this year's iPad Mini 7. They've tweaked the colours ever so slightly. This year, we've obviously got the blue, we've got purple and starlight again. But each of the hues, each of the colours have been tweaked ever so slightly so that Apple can tell us that it's been a redesign from the ground up. They've even given us the same display. And from my experience, I've not seen the jelly scrolling, but jelly scrolling is still there. It's still a thing. It still happens. And they got so much hate and so much backlash for jelly scrolling when they released the iPad Mini 6 years ago for them to not even consider fixing that on this year's model is just mind blowing. It's almost like they just don't care about the iPad Mini 7. We've got the same screen pixel per inch density at 326 ppi. They've not even tried to make it any better. And don't get me wrong, the screen is good. It's okay. But in 2024, when we've got mini LED, we've got OLED devices, for the iPad Mini 7 to still only be rocking a liquid retina display is, I'm going to say this a lot of times in this video, mind-blowing. It also still only comes with the same max brightness. When all of the other devices, we're seeing improvements on max brightness all the time. And this is the one Apple device where you are going to be taking it out and about with you because of its portability. It's the one device where you're actually going to want a brighter screen. You're more likely to be taking it out and about with you to chuck it in your bag and get it out in the park and, and have a read. You're more likely to take it to the coffee shop sat by the window with the glare hitting you. For them to not increase the max brightness is, again, unforgivable. We've got the same 12 megapixel wide camera. No improvements, no updates, same 4K video, no difference whatsoever. And then when we flip the iPad round, so we look at the front, we've got exactly the same 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with center stage. And while I think center stage is brilliant, we've still got the camera in the portrait position. Put the camera on the landscape edge, please Apple. We've even got, according to Apple's website, the exact same battery life for this iPad mini seven. Even though we've now moved to the A17 chip, even though we've moved from a five nanometer to a three nanometer chip, we've still only got the exact same battery life when we've got the same size screen, the same quality screen. The only thing that's changed is the chip, which is more efficient, it's more powerful, yet we haven't gained any extra battery life. And Apple are always saving costs. And that's why we're still rocking Touch ID on the top of this iPad mini. Apple could, with the size of the bezels on this thing, quite easily fit Face ID into that bezel. And it would seamlessly fit into this iPad. And Touch ID is fine. It, it's really responsive, it's accurate, it's quick, it's, it's, it's a good touch ID. But when you're used to an iPhone 16 Pro Max, or you're used to an iPad Pro, when you do start to use the iPad mini, you do forget that you've got to put your finger on the top of the device. You do end up just flicking and gawating and thinking, why isn't that? And then you go and press it again. That's everything Apple have kept the same when you compare the iPad mini 6 and the iPad mini 7. There are, however, some minor, minor changes that Apple have made to the iPad mini 7, which don't constitute much of an upgrade or much of a justification for upgrading your own device. One of the most important upgrades for the iPad mini 7 this year is the A17 Pro chip. From the five nanometer to the three nanometer chip, we are gonna see an improvement in that device's performance. And the only reason we've got the A17 Pro is to allow Apple intelligence to come onto this device. 
Well, if you can't get Apple intelligence right now in the UK, you can get it in the United States. So if you're watching this in the US, I hope you're enjoying it. But the only reason we've got the A17 Pro is for Apple intelligence. It's got that extra RAM, that extra processing power to be able to do all of the computing that Apple intelligence is going to need to do. And Apple intelligence, they have spent so much money on saying how good Apple intelligence is going to be, how, how important it's going to be as a revolution. Tim Cook recently said it's going to be one of the biggest things to ever come out of Apple. And from what I've seen so far, and what I've seen other tech YouTubers talk about, is the fact it's actually quite poor. I'm hoping once we get a few more stages into the AI rollout through iOS 18, I'm hoping it gets up to the point where it can actually compete with other AI assistants out there. But at the moment, if you're thinking about buying an iPad mini 7 just for the AI capabilities, don't do it. One of the best upgrades they have made to the iPad mini 7 this year is the increase in base storage. For the same price, you're now getting double the amount of storage. We've gone from 68 gigabytes up to 128. And as a user, that's quite important. You can't expand this memory. You can't increase it. You can put all of your photos onto iCloud, but once you've done that and you're then building up the storage through apps on your device, once you hit that 68 gigabyte capacity, that's you've done. So Apple had to, in 2024, up it to 128 gigabytes or risk being mocked even more by the competition. Alongside the iPad mini 7's updated chip, Apple have also updated the Wi-Fi capabilities within the device. And we've gone from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 6E, essentially giving access to a fast lane on your Wi-Fi router to increase speeds to make you be able to download content much quicker. Whilst they've given us Wi-Fi 6E, they neglected and chose not to give us Wi-Fi 7. So whilst having Wi-Fi 6E is a nice step forward, it's not the big step forward that we'd have liked to have seen if we'd have been given Wi-Fi 7. When we got the update to iPad mini 7, Apple were a little bit sneaky. They removed all support from every other Apple Pencil. Apple could have so easily incorporated all of the other, all of the recent Apple Pencil products into the support mechanisms for iPad mini 7, but they chose not to. It's another one of those things as Apple fans like I am, you accept it, you buy the new iPad Pencil Pro, you enjoy it, but your bank balance really does take a hit when Apple make decisions like this to make you upgrade other products in line with a mediocre iPad mini update. So comparing the iPad mini 7 to the iPad mini 6, why is this such a frustrating update? And it is because it is such a light touch. This 100% is Apple's Apple intelligence update. They didn't want to bring anything else to it. They didn't want to give us any spec bumps in any meaningful way. They wanted to be able to roll out Apple intelligence on the device. They wanted to be able to say that in three months time, all of their devices have been updated and upgraded to be able to support Apple intelligence. So if you've made it this far, you're clearly interested in trying to figure out if the iPad mini 7 update is worth upgrading your own iPad mini. And the truth is, if you have an iPad mini 6, this is not worth the update. It's not worth £499 or $499. If you've got an iPad mini five or earlier, then maybe this is the iPad for you. But if you can get a discounted iPad mini six on Amazon or at a local retailer, then the truth is that this isn't a big enough upgrade to justify the extra cost that the iPad mini seven would be over a discounted iPad mini six. So this is Apple's most frustrating product of 2024 but it's the one device that I'm gonna use every single day. It's gonna be the one device that I use on the sofa or on bed when I'm trying to relax and unwind because for the things that I need, for the things that I wanna use it for, for consuming content, for keeping up to date on Twitter, for all of those things, for surfing the internet, it is a fantastically light, portable, easy to use device that I just cannot live without. Thanks for watching, speak soon, out.